So today we're going to be taking a look at using the symmetry tool in Adobe Photoshop CC uh, 2021. To begin, I'm going to look to create a new document. Prior to that, you can see an example of the symmetry tool where I traced out the left side of the mask over top of an original or another image, and it replicates over to the right side. We're going to repeat that same type of process, but without any type of trace so it can be an original design. I'm going to go up to File New, and within the design, I can choose from the presets at the top navigation, or I can get into modifying my own measurements over on the right side of our pop-up. For the document name, I'm renaming it Mask, and I'm gonna change the width to 11 inches wide, 11 inches high. So the orientation doesn't necessarily matter, but we're gonna work at 300 DPI just so we get some good quality. And I can maintain RGB color. We're not necessarily gonna be printing this design, but we can get some vibrant colors that can be produced, particularly for the web itself. Once I have my presets, I can get, click Create. And if you do not have your ruler set, we wanna make sure that we have a ruler so we can get a couple guidelines. I'm gonna go up to view at the top navigation. Up at view, we're gonna go make sure that rulers is checked on. If you don't have it checked on, you will not be able to see the rulers around the top navigation and left side navigation. So again, just view rulers, and you'll see the measurements pop up along the top navigation and left side navigation. I'm gonna switch this over to inches, just so it's a little bit more connected to the file size that we're working with. I can simply right click on the rulers area, changing it from pixels to inches. With our design today, we're gonna to be creating a mask, whether it's a Tiki mask, African mask, Aztec, Inuit, many different variations of styles that you can consider. But it's all a matter of the replication that's going to come over to the opposite side. So you don't necessarily have to try drawing symmetrically when it's done for you. So I'm gonna go over to the left side navigation where I can see the ruler, and I'm going to click and drag to get one of my guidelines. And knowing that my document size is 11 inches wide, I can look to put my document at five and a half. Do my best to have that centered. Now with that guideline set, I'm going to look to get my symmetry tool. With the symmetry tool, it is limited to using the paintbrush in Adobe Photoshop. So understand that you will not be able to select the symmetry without selecting on the paintbrush first. So I'm gonna go over the left side navigation and choose out the brush icon. You can see as it shows an example of the tool being used. I'm gonna select that tool. And at the top navigation, below where we have file edit image layers and so on, down in the second area, we can modify the size of our brush, as well as getting all the way over to the right side where we'll see a little butterfly icon. This butterfly icon represents set symmetry options for painting. I can choose this, and we're gonna select the vertical option, which is gonna set a guideline right down the middle of the page. So I have a good marker indication, indicating where my document is. If you need to zoom out on your document, it's Command C, or sorry, Command minus in max or on apples or control minus on PCs. So I'm gonna to look to go to the top and bottom of this guideline and extend it up to the end of the page. Just helps make me feel more secure that the design is going to meet all the way down to the bottom of the page. Now that I have this, I can either hit enter or just simply click on the check mark at the top navigation. And to begin with, right now, my foreground color is set to red. Anything that I draw out with the paintbrush will replicate from the left side over to the right side. What One specific thing that I wanna make sure of my brush is making sure that the hardness is up to 100%. I'd rather have a hard brush in which I can fill in with color later on, making it easy to fill in rather than leaving open gaps of white from my design. So I'm gonna have hardness up to 100, Size, I can adjust using the right bracket or left bracket 
as I am getting into the design. But before I start to draw, I want to make sure to create a new layer. Right now, you can currently see that I have one layer, the background layer. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the layers panel, and I can simply click on create new layer, adding the new layer. And I'm just going to rename this line so I have an indication of what I'm working with. So again, as I said before, now I have a red for my fill color. If I do want to change the foreground color, I can simply double click and choose out any color along the color picker. Or I can adjust on the hue bar, just on this rainbow bar, and choose out a color of your choosing. But for right now, I'm going to stay with the red. And if I were to do an example of red just rolling on the left side, you can see that it replicates over on the right. The one limitation you have with Photoshop or using a mouse is that it's not going to show contrast with your line width. If I'm drawing with a mouse, you're limited to maintaining the same thickness throughout the design. But if I am looking to draw some weighted lines, I could use a drawing tablet or a, ta um, a Intuos tablet to draw out the lines as I need. There are many different options for drawing tablets. We're not using one for this assignment today. So we're just looking to understand the tools and the ability to use the symmetry tool. So I can always undo control Z to undo to get rid of any lines. Now I'm going to adjust my line so that I'm actually working with black lines. It may be beneficial for you to sketch out concepts first. When I like to do sketching, I do use a light blue color for my initial sketches, and then I can go over top with a new layer, setting the black tone over top. So if I were doing an example, I can look to start sketching out. I don't necessarily have to think about the details, it's just a matter of starting to set the placement of how I'm gonna fit all the objects into the image. So if I were doing some type of emotion or trying to show something quickly, I can just use the mouse, sketch out an idea. Let's say these are the eyebrows of my mask for today. Or when I think about the forehead. Remember, I only have to go over up to this line that separates the left and right hash. If I do go crossing over, it will replicate over to that side. But remember, you can always hit Control Z if you mess up. Now that I have my forehead, I can look to figure out how I want to design out the eyes. Again, this is just a sketch, so I can always go back, erase out some areas, or redraw later on. So if I want to make it a little bit more harsh, some stronger eyes. Then I can look to start building out the nose elements, giving a sense of how they're going to be designed throughout. Maybe give the nostrils. And I can even start planning concepts and ideas for elements that are going to really help make this stand out. So maybe a bullhorn nose ring eventually for the character. Then I can think about the mouth. With the mouth, I may want to get into showing the teeth. So I may go with a wider mouth, having a very strong expression happening. If I'm not necessarily happy with something, again, I can always step back and undo. So if I want to redefine this bottom lip, I want to wrap it up. Again, it's all about what you want to do, what you want to create. I can always add in elements. If I want to have a thicker bottom lip, or have a strong upper lip, or a more thin upper lip, I can even start planning up the teeth, keeping in mind how I'm going to fit different areas. I may want to do it as one single line with a couple cuts in it. And if you want to create a straight line, you can always click a point and then go to the area that you want to create a straight line with, hold down shift and click a point. It automatically makes a straight line connecting between the two points that you made. So again, just simply click a point, move your cursor downward, hold down shift and click, and you get that straight line from point to point. 
Or again, I can get into more modification of drawing out teeth individually. And with individually, it still is going to draw the right side tooth as I draw on the left. So I can get some more variation. And you can kind of have fun with it. Just toy around to experiment and see what you can kind of create. So maybe I'm going to give it fangs. I want to think about the entire face. Think about the bone structure that might make up a skull type of shape. <clears throat> or think about the jaw or how the chin would end up for the bottom of the image. This is just a quick concept of for mocking up my initial design and then I can later get into drawing it out. So I can make more modifications. I can think about ears, maybe horns. Give it more of a demon look. I wanted to throw some horns on later on. If you are struggling to draw out straight lines with your mouths, you could always click a point and then hold down shift with small increments to draw out a curved line and get a little bit more precision in your lines. They're a little bit cleaner overall rather than trying to rough it out. But at least I have an initial concept in which I can kind of build from and see where I can go with the design. So now that I have my initial design, I'm going to create a new layer. With that new layer, I still have the paintbrush tool, but I'm going to switch my fill color or foreground color to black. Just so we can see the lines a lot better. And for my original lines layer, I'm going to drop the opacity just so it's not as stark and that way... I'm not getting distracted by what's going on, but I can make kind of make the design my own. So again, as I'm making it a little bit more professional, I may want to consider having straighter lines. So rather than freehanding it, I may want to click a point. I'm going to make sure to go onto my new layer, with all this new lines. But with this new layer, I have 100% opacity. I click a point. Hold down shift, click a point, then I get that nice straight line. Now I can look to build out the little details that are going to help make up my shape, my figure. Maybe I want to create a couple curves rather than having a straight line. And give it more of a wrapping feel. You have to figure out what works best for your style, what you're trying to create. Think about the emotions that go into the design. So again, just closing up back to the shape. You want to make sure to close all your black lines just so that it's going to be easy to use the paint bucket later on to fill in our shapes. I can think about roughness of my design. Maybe I want to get a couple wood wood elements. Bring that into my concept for the mask. So maybe I might freehand a couple elements. Again, I can always shrink down the size of my brush using the le uh, left bracket next to the P key. And finally, the middle line, give you an indication of where the wood block's going to go. And later on, I can look to add in a couple details that might help refine and give me a sense of wood elements. So if I wanted to think about how wood might grain, think about lines that are going to help really show that element of grain going along the wood. It may be straight. You can draw more freehand. It's up to you. but this will give me a good indication of how wood might chip away. It's not necessarily going to always be flat or perfect, but it looks a little bit more handmade, a little bit more cut and created from individual pieces.
if at any time you do feel like you don't like the symmetry, you can always switch off your symmetry. If I go back up to the top navigation, click on the little butterfly icon, I can click on symmetry off. And now when I do start to draw, you see that it only applies over on the left side of this image, not applying onto the right. But if I ever want to go back into the symmetry, I can hit last use symmetry. And now again, whenever I create out these lines, it's going to replicate it over on the opposite side. Thinking about the other elements that make up the shape. And again, if I'm not happy with something, I can always hit Control Z or Command Z on a Mac. Or just do your best to go as steady as possible with the mouse. Again, I don't have to necessarily stick to the design that I originally created. I can make modifications as needed. So don't be afraid to experiment more. If I want to think about shapes, I can use shapes, think about the elements of art that go into building out a composition. So I might use a triangular shape or use a circular shape to help draw out, say, the cheeks or bone structure of my subject. And if I am getting distracted by the old original design, I can always hide it and just focus on what I have new. I don't have to fill this in right away. If I want to fill in the nostrils, I can wait till later. Use the paint bucket, it'll be a little bit faster. But just think about how they're ultimately going to help fill out the shapes for your subject, for your mask. And even though my lines are very thin for my black mask or for the black outlines, I can always go back and thicken up those strokes later on. If I want to think about patterns, some type of variation in the design, I can look to draw out designs over top of areas, maybe using simple triangles to help define out certain features. Adding in patterns adds, adds a lot more interest throughout your design. And you may be able to create something new and different, something that you haven't seen before.
again, it does take some time getting used to drawing out as perfectly as you can. So just practice. That's how you get better within the work. Or you just draw it over and over again until you eventually get it right. And I can use black lines to help give me a sense of shading, help create some shadow, or a sense that it's not going to be all necessarily flat. But can help define out some areas, make them stand out from others. If you're ever uncomfortable with the line, you can always let go, release, and then go ahead and start drawing out another. That way, if I do mess up, I can always hit Control Z or Command Z, and then get back into drawing out areas. So now I feel like the background is a little bit more of a distraction. I can simply hide out that line and then continue on building, focusing on my new design. Might want to give a little bit of curvature to the teeth, that way it can give me better separation and understanding of how the teeth are going to be shaped and separated from the other pieces. So I might want to consider more of a fang for certain features that can create a different mood, set a different tone that you're trying to create. And kind of, I can think about perspective and think about how areas might fade away or show some depth. So if I were thinking about inside the mouth, I may want to consider what it would look like if I start to see the tops of teeth for, say, the bottom areas. As I go into the background, I might be able to see the actual tops of teeth. So it adds a little bit more dimension make something a little bit more interesting. Again, I can always go back in. If you want to use, erase out certain areas, you can switch over to the eraser tool. With the eraser tool, just like the paintbrush, any area that you erase on one side will affect the other. While this may not apply to other areas of the objects, just consider this when getting into drawing out. So make sure that you check your opacity. I'm going to raise my opacity up to 100% for my eraser. And the hardness, I'm going to push up to 100 just so I can get a clean, crisp line when I do erase. So you can see me just erasing out that little edge in the corner of the mouth. And if I'm not happy with some of the teeth or I want to clean up some areas, soften them up overall, I see a little bit of overlap, so I might just want to clean this up. thin out those back lines so they're not as thick as the ones in front on the teeth. This can also help sharpen up some areas. If I don't necessarily like some lines, if I want to add in some depth overall, I can look to cut out some areas, thin out some lines and make it appear as if they might be fading the distance or I'm looking to get a sharp, a sharp edge.
But I'm going to go back over to my paintbrush and so continue to painting again. Again, if I'm not necessarily happy with something, I can always go back to the eraser, look to clean up some lines, adjust the size of the brush with the right or left bracket as needed. And don't be afraid to try out different things. You may want to consider adding in other elements that you may not normally see. Um, it can be adding in multiple eyes, multiple faces in general, or adding in details of flowers or leaves to help kind of decorate the overall design. Again, as I talked about before, I can always switch over to the eraser tool. If I want to sharpen out some of these lines rather than having that thick variation at the top of the stem or the veins that on the leaves, I can always thin these out. I'm going to click and point, hold down shift, and click and point. So it took off a little element there, but I can do it over on the right side as well to give me that sharp edge on that top edge. I can do that down for the smaller pieces as well. Click a point from outside, hold down shift, and click. Gives me that sharp edge. And then thin out any areas that, as needed. With this piece, I'm looking to kind of draw out a flower shape. So I'm kind of drawing out petals that go around. And as you more add more and more details, it's really going to help really define your overall look and feel.
and think about how objects will overlap. They're not necessarily going to be placed perfectly together, so you have to kind of consider how a piece may need to stand out or that you're going to have some variations of thickness of lines if an object is closer up or further away. Again, I just want to make sure that things are enclosed. The more objects that are enclosed, it's going to be the e easier to paint overall. Being able to select out the colors that you want and avoid filling in areas that you don't. And you can see the more details that you add, the more creative your mask end up, may end up being. To get references, don't be afraid to see what other people have done. Get inspired of what you can create if you just think about how to fill the overall space. Now I'm trying to create some depth within the eyes. Make it look like we're seeing a little bit more of the sides overall. I don't necessarily have to be exact, but I'm trying to show that the wood is going inward, so that's not necessarily all flat. I may draw it a couple times, but it's just to make sure that I get it as correct as I'm hoping to. So now that I have a overall concept, I can look to start thinking about coloring. I 
I may think and consider other details I could possibly add, which I can always do this later on. But maybe I just want to have a couple other elements filling out the space. So once I have my design, I can look to start adding in some details or adding in the color that I want for my piece. If I want to think about wooden colors, what I'm going to do is look over to the paint bucket tool. Paint bucket tool is located underneath the gradient over on the left side of navigation. And you can even do gradients as well, but you want to make sure that you're using the selection tool to select out the areas that you want to fill. So if I wanted to focus in coloring in parts of the flowers, I can use my magic wand tool, select in the area of the flower. I can hold in shift to select out multiple areas. And certain areas I gotta be careful of because I can see that it's selecting inside of the face as well. So I may have to go back into the paintbrush tool and command D or control D to deselect and close those back up. But back over on the Magic wand and click in the area that I want to select and paint in. And you have to you see that you have to do it on both the left and right side. Unlike the with the paintbrush, it is not going to do symmetry when you're on other tools. But if I wanted to customize a gradient, I can go up to the top navigation after clicking on the gradient tool. I may want to pick out some yellows or oranges. Click on the drop down of the presets that are already given to me. And if I wanted to simply add in a gradient onto these areas, I can click and drag, and you see that they automatically fill in those spaces. But looking at it, I may want to do these individually one at a time so that I can get more of the yellow color. When I do click and drag in one area, it only really shows that yellow in one of the flowers. Whereas I want to see it in every flower. So I'm going to Command Z or Control Z to undo. Then I can look to deselect. And again, reselect with the magic wand. You can use the gradient tool, click and drag the area, and you see how it fills in with that yellow orange color. Then again, just use the magic wand, click inside the area that you want to fill. Back to the gradient and drag filling in that space. So you can use the shortcut keys if I want to get the gradient tool just simply hitting G on the keyboard or if I want to go over to the magic wand tool it's hitting W on the keyboard. So for my gradient, I'm going to switch, make sure that it's on the radial gradient. That way I can click and drag from the middle, and you see how the yellow is going to fill in the middle area. Orange is going to reach the edge of the leaves.
I can also use the paint bucket tool. So if I want to fill in a solid color, I can change my foreground color. Right now it's set to white. Maybe I want to do green for the leaves around the head. If I want to fill in this area, I want to make sure to use the paint bucket and make sure that you have the new lines layer selected. I can just simply click inside those areas to fill them in. And when I do a race, you can see that, or when I do try to fill in this bottom leaf, I can see that it fills in the entire space. I don't want that. It's just because it's happening because I don't have the black enclosed within the area. So I can hit Command Z, go back to my paintbrush, make sure my foreground color is set to black again. And then I just want to thicken up these lines, make sure that they reach over the entire space of the leaf. If I take a closer look, I can see the leaf is actually not touching the flower right above it. So I'm going to make sure it reaches the edge. And now when I go into the paint bucket tool and I look to fill in the space, it does fill in very easily. Then we get into other areas. So I can look, start to look into the wood elements. I'm going to go more down to an orangish tone. more of a rich brown and again just click in the area to fill in these spaces make sure you don't click on the black lines or they will fill in with the color that you have in your foreground and looking at it right now I have a good brown tone but it's very flat so I may want to consider doing some variations on color so I can do lighter browns in the areas that are closer up That way I'm kind of creating depth within the design as well. I go a little bit lighter if I want. And if I want a sample color, I can always use the eyedropper tool to match the area and then look to apply this into other areas on my face. Maybe I want to pick out some blue tones. I have some pre-existing areas that I can fill in color. Maybe it's around the lips. Again, I just wanted to make sure that I enclosed all these spaces. I can always add in details later on. You can fill in around the eyes, bringing up that blue color. Again, eyedropper tool can match the color. Use that to fill in spaces around the nose, around the cheeks. Or again, pick out other tones that you may want to consider on certain areas to fill those in. I want to test out a couple different variations. Maybe want to see what a couple tones look like. Or possibly consider adding in more details to change the look and feel of certain areas. So just adding in these two black lines, it gives me the ability to help separate out the reds on the face. Again, creating a little bit more dynamic imagery for the overall space.
And don't be afraid to experiment. Try out different colors. Maybe you might find that certain colors work or might stand out in certain areas that you haven't tried before. So again, once I get a lot of this filled in, I can consider adding in a background, adding in details. Right now I feel like the wood on the nose area is very flat, so I can go back in and paint in some areas. Or I can give a little gold to the little bullhorn. So if I want to check on the background area, I'm going to click over on the gradient tool and change out my gradient. Right now it's on the oranges. I go over to more blue tones. I'm going to pick up more of a blue-green, give it a very tropical feel. And with the background layer selected, I can click and drag outward. You can see how it expands out to the design, but I want to be careful of the colors. I don't want to be taking away from the mask itself. So I can always alter the colors click on the gradient tool it will go a little bit more seafoam green or darker variation I can do a lighter variation over on the other side if you don't want a color just simply click and drag it downward Again, just click and drag outward from the middle. Get that expanding across the scene, but I'm going to invert my selection, change it so it faces the opposite direction. I want the warmer color on the middle, dark color on the outside. Or I may change it completely just so I'm not picking up any of these greens or oranges. Let's go more purple tones. Again, drag it out so it can stand out. A little bit better over in color. Keep testing and experimenting to see what you can create and how it's going to modify your overall design. Or if you want the mask to really stand out, you can even consider just a flat black. Maybe it might help pop out. Go back over to the paint bucket, simply click on the background. You step back to the white background, and I click, you fill it in. It really helps to stand out for the overall design, but now I want to think about the details that are going to go into this. If this blue line is bothering you, I can go back up to view at the top navigation and go to show. I can uncheck guides. 
and you see that gets eliminated. So I can kind of focus in on drawing out the details or adding in variations on color. Or I can eye drop, match the brown tones. And remember with the paintbrush, it will still apply the symmetry that we had prior to, but just make sure that you're on the new lines layer so you can go back into painting areas. It's okay if I accidentally go over some areas of this black, you can always paint over top. So you see how I'm adding in darker tones. I can always adjust the size of the brush if I want to work larger, fill in more space. You can see it's very, it is very flat. So I can consider also looking at other tools to help modify this. I use the blur tool to help blur out some areas. Help soften up some areas. You can see as the dark brown is starting to overall blur around there. But I can look at other tools such as the smudge tool, where I can kind of smear the brown tones. And change the shading. Again, you saw the pop-up come up. That means that you cannot use the smudge or burn or any of these features to modify the tone or to get the colors to blend in on both sides. You can only be seeing on the one side and you have to do it to the other as well. So if I'm not happy with it, I can always go back in. Again, I'm just gonna switch over to black for my foreground. This is where I can add in back in the details that I originally had. And make sure I'm on the paintbrush. And that repetition of black really does help create shadows and create a sense of depth within the design. So I may want to continue consider that type of style on different aspects of my design as well. So going around the nose, rather than just leaving it flat, adding in the repetition of black lines underneath helps really give the sense of a shadow.
Once I get done coloring, I can consider highlights. With highlights, I could use a white brush to really create some pop of color or some interest in the design. Make some areas stand out. And you can see how those white highlights really help make an area pop, make it stand out. But we're going to stop there. I'm going to keep adding in more details to make it really stand out. But you have an overall sense of how the symmetry tool can be really very interesting in creating something like a mask. So I'll add in more elements, but I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and hope to see you again soon.